So now we're going to look at the list of application controls because I really want to stress to you that these have the same function as those manual key controls. They are there to stop fictitious transactions from being recorded. They're there to make sure that all transactions that should be recorded are, and they're make, there to make sure the transactions are recorded accurately. Okay, so there's just new names for them, and just different ways on how they go about achieving that goal, but they have that same goal. Okay, so guys, there's lots of types of application controls, and we obviously need to know each of their names and their roles, but often it's just lists and lists and it's quite confusing. So I'm going to take each section, discuss the control and then go and physically show you the control in our computer information system so that you can make the connection and we can easily move on from this. Okay, but ultimately you are going to have to study these because it's new names and you need to know the name. So, we're going to first look at our input controls, and guys, there's lots of input controls because this is the place that the data gets put into the system, and you've got to make sure that that data is right. So, we're going to make sure that there aren't any transactions going in that shouldn't be. We've got to make sure that all transactions that should are, and we've got to make sure that they're going in correctly. Lots of controls for that. And then we've got some controls over outputs, which just help us to make sure that output matches input. Remember processing, we said we're not going to worry about because that's all about how the system is programmed itself. Okay, and like our example Sage, I haven't got any control over how it's been programmed, but it has been developed and programmed and tested to make sure that it does record things the way it should as soon as you put through some sort of information like an order, an invoice or, or something like that. Okay, so I've already shown you, but I will show you again, access controls, the fact that when you want to log in, you have to put in a password and a username so that they can make sure that only the right people are gaining access. And this is obviously to prevent fictitious transactions because if it's the right people gaining access, we believe that only the right transaction should be input. Okay, guys remember those two controls with passwords, we must always put down the fact that if there's inactivity, it should log you out and if there's incorrect password attempts, it should shut you down or log out either way, but you shouldn't be able to attempt to log in again and again and again. And generally that is three. Okay, let's quickly have a look. I would like to access my accounting package. I have to put in my username, which is my info email address, and then I need to put in my password. And provided it's correct, I've been logged in. So that's access controls done. Now we get to batch controls, guys. And batch controls is a little bit more complicated than simply showing it to you in our information system. Firstly, because we don't process through batching, which means we don't actually have a batch control system. So I'll have to explain it to you, and then I'll show you through an Excel spreadsheet as to how that would work. But ultimately, guys, batch controls works if you record in batches or you input in batches. So what I mean, I mean I don't put down every time there's an order from a customer, do I input it into the system, and every time an invoice is required, do I put it in. We wait till we've got a, a sum of invoices, so multiple, and then we record them all at once. Okay. Now there's big risks in that, because if you are waiting until you reach a certain number to input, or if you are waiting to only input on a certain day, there's risks that you could lose some of the data that needs to get input, 
There's risks that you could put multiple in because you're putting them in at once and so you could put too many. And there's lots of risks of errors. So these are some controls to help prevent errors when you're trying to input a batch of data. They call control totals and there's a manual element to this as well as a computerized. So ultimately, we have three control totals, financial, hash, and record. And I've explained it to you here. A financial control total is the random amount. So we need to calculate the total random amount of all the data that needs to be input. And then we have a total figure. A hash is totaling all the numerical fields. And then we've got a total figure of all the numerical fields. So guys, numerical fields could be all the quantities if we're looking at invoices, all the prices. Quantity times price equals the random amount. So financial would be all the random amounts added up. Hash would be all the quantities added up on all the documents and all the prices added up on all the documents. Anywhere where there is a number on that document that is the same with the rest of the documents, they would add it up. Okay? And then a record is the number of entries, so how many documents? So let me quickly show it to you and then I'll explain a little bit further. So here I've got an example of an invoice. You can see I've got my document number, I've got my date, my customers, and my customer number, and then I've got the details. These are the stock items. This is what was on the invoice. The quantity sold, the price of each, the total random amount, quantity times price, and then I've got my total figure of this invoice by adding everything up. Okay, but now we said we're doing batches. So imagine this company has five invoices that they want to record on the last day of the month. So now they need to create a control sheet which has control totals. So here's what I've done. Here's my control sheet. I need to have a record count. I need to have a hash total. And I need to have a financial total. Okay? So my record count says how many documents are we going to be recording now? How many have to be input? So I've got one, 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 one. So I total this up. And I can see that there is five. Okay, so I keep a record count, how many need to go into the system. There's five. Then I said we need to have hash totals, which is the sum of any numerical field. So we go to what we are inputting, which is the invoice, and we look for any field on that invoice that is numerical. And you can see we've got our document number, which is a number. We've got the quantity, which is a number. We've got the price, which is a number. And we've got the random amount, which is a number. But the random amount is a financial total ready, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to add up document numbers, add up the quantities, add up the prices to have multiple hash totals. And there we've got it. All my invoice numbers are there. All my quantities of what would be on each of those invoices that is there, provided we're invoicing the same things. And all my prices for those items are there. Have a look quickly at this one that we have as an example. I've said quantity 2, 5 and 3, add those up, it equals 10. Price is 10, 12, 13, add that up and my total for the price is 35. So that's how I'm getting the 10s and the 35. I'm saying assuming each of these invoices are invoicing the same thing, we've got the same. So now I add these up. Sum those and I sum the rest of those two. So now I've got three hash totals guys. 27910, 50 and 175. And then finally, I need my financial total, which is all of the random amounts on the invoices added up. And now this is what my control sheet has. I've got my record count here of five. I've got my hash total of invoice number, quantity, 
and price, and then I've got my financial total here. Okay, what happens now? This is all done manually. Before we start to put each of the invoices into the system so that the details are all captured in the system, we put these totals in. The record counts are five, the hash totals 27910, 50 and 175, and the financial total. We just put them in as a line item in our system. We then input each of the individual invoices and then the computer, based on what's been input, will calculate a record count of how many entries were input. We'll ca calculate the three different hash totals because it'll work out the totals of the numerical fields other than the financial. And then it will calculate the financial total. And the computer will then reconcile what we input manually to what it calculated to see if there were any records missing, so where our record counts in the computers differ, or to see where any of the hash totals differ because it means something has been input incorrectly then, and then any random amounts differ. And obviously guys, if your hash totals differ and it's your invoice number that differs, but your random amount doesn't differ and your quantity and price hash totals don't differ, you know that it's just an error in the invoice numbers, not an error in the quantity, price, or random amount. Okay, or if your hash totals differ in terms of quantity and price, but the financial total is the same, then you know that the error that has been put for quantity and price cancels out when it gets to the random amount. So maybe what they've gone and done is put 35 as the quantity, but 10 as the price, which see, Random amount stays the same, but our hash totals would then differ. Okay, so it's just a nice way of reconciling a manual, um, the manual totals to what the computer would do to pick up issues. Don't stress too much, guys. Hash isn't very common, and it's mostly in your wages cycle. Okay, when they record wages at weekly, um, and they do that in a batch. Okay, let's not get too focused here, let's move on.